All right, great. So thank you for the opportunity to be here and uh, present to everyone today. And I'm going to be talking about the uh, behavior of type K shrinkage comp when it's uh, placed under mechanical restraint. So we'll get right into our big talking points for today. Uh, as a few of the presenters have already discussed, um, one of the big issues that you talk about when you're using shrinkage comp is overcoming a major uh, obstacle in Portland cement, which is restrained drying shrinkage, causing tension in your concrete, early age premature cracking, and then eventual continued degradation. So shrinkage comp, sometimes SCC or SC abbreviation, uh, you create a volume increase in the concrete uh, early age. If restrained, that places the concrete in compression and will delay or prevent those tensile stresses. So in the literature, again, uh, as been discussed, uh, etringite production is what creates a volume increase in the concrete early age. Uh, type K uh, cementitious uh, shrinkage compensating admixtures are the most commonplace uh, today. So some past research has looked at whether uh, external mechanical restraint uh, will reduce the efficacy of shrinkage comp. Um, and one such experiment, uh, Russell in 1973, looked at three different types of shrinkage comp and used a hydraulic ram to imitate a fully restrained slab condition and concluded that uh, stiff boundary conditions may uh, potentially reduce the efficacy of shrinkage comp. Uh, other case studies and field studies have looked at uh, successful applications of shrinkage comp. A skilled sin, um, some large slab, uh, 420,000 square feet of crack-free uh, floor slabs used to type K shrinkage comp. Uh, the Rockford, Illinois Airport in 1993 uh, expanded using some 12 by 18 panels shown to the uh, far side in red uh, with conventional Portland cement and then uh, shrinkage comp panels, both with seal fibers and post tensioning. And uh, pavement condition indexes after more than 10 years in service, you can see that anything with the shrinkage comp, post tensioned or not, uh, had much better pavement condition than the Portland cement panels. So in 2013, Dr. Chris Ramsier and Seth Roseworm studied uh, restrained columns under a passive restraint system. So these are four inch diameter by four feet long columns cast with type K uh, shrinkage comp. And they were intended to be restrained only by the expansion of the concrete itself, just like a concrete slab would be restrained by mature slabs or on the on its periphery. Uh, cardboard tubes were used to cast the concrete and PVC jackets were used to maintain a wet cure around the concrete columns and cardboard tubes. So a uh, seven day wet cure is executed as a standard. The forms are stripped, but some issues cropped up. Stripping the forms because the cardboard stuck to the concrete created trauma and physical disturbance. Uh, installation of the load cell and restraint plates uh, introduced erratic pre-compression loads. And overall, some of the data sets were just uh, noisy and or incomplete to some extent. So this study looked at improving upon the 2013 uh, work by uh, Dr. Ramsey and Seth Roseworm, and uh, want to specifically look at if increasing the stiffness of the boundary condition will cause a significant difference in concrete expansion, and whether type K shrinkage comp can adequately compensate for shrinkage in those different restraint conditions. So the materials chosen for this uh, project were uh, chosen intentionally to be very standard for uh, an ordinary concrete mix design, with the exception of the type K uh, shrinkage compensating mineral additive. And this additive was used in proportion uh, replacement with the total Portland cement content at 15, 17, 19, and 21% replacement. As Dr. Besser pointed out, this can be up to 30% and we used a 15 to 21% replacement. But importantly, the total cementitious material and the water to cement ratio remain constant because the, uh, the amount of paste in the mix design will dictate a lot of shrinkage or expansive behaviors. So that was held constant. 
uh, similar to what Dr. Ramsier described in the tank and bridge deck study, uh, viridin wire strain gauges were used for the automated uh, data acquisition for those which were not measured, strain was not measured manually. The testing program consisted of uh, four by eight inch uh, concrete cylinders for compressor strength. ASTM C-157 and C-878 were measured manually uh, for unrestrained and restrained expansion. And then vibrating wire strain gauges were used for six inch by 12 inch restrained and unrestrained cylinders, as well as the same type of four inch by 48 inch columns described in the previous work. C-157 is primarily intended as a shrinkage test, but it was used in this case to measure unrestrained expansion because of its geometric similarities to the C-878 test. For the results, basic compressor strength, we saw uh, an expected compressor strength gain running from about 2,000 PSI at one day to five to 6,000 PSI at 28 days. So at a high water cement, at a, at a water cement ratio of 0.5, we are getting sound, uh, high quality, high, good compressor strength concrete. The ASTM C-157 unrestrained expansion test used a uh, conventional dial gauge. And here's the results from that test. We saw a general increase in peak expansion uh, with increasing the percent uh, shrinkage comp uh, admixture additive. With the exception of at 17 and 19 percent, we saw some uncertainty in the data. And this is partly because of the fact that the, uh, the dial gauge used for the ASTM C-157 test in this case is only accurate to within 10 microstring. So there is some noise in the data. For restrained expansion, the test was done the same way. The uh, only difference is the threaded rod embedded in the specimen that ties together one quarter inch restraint plates at either end per the ASTM. And again, we see this uh, trend of increasing peak expansion uh, as the percent component is increased. For a direct comparison between ASTM C-157 and C-878, unrestrained and restrained expansion, we see that the unrestrained specimens, which are shown in the faded lines, uh, show a higher peak expansion in general at any given point in time uh, compared to the restrained counterparts. For the unrestrained expansion, uh, six by 12 cylinders of vibrant wire strain gauge was embedded concentrically in the specimen. And the same mixed designs were tested and uh, got very clean, uh, smooth data with the ordering of the trends that we expect, uh, 15, 17, 19, and 21% causing gradual increases in peak expansion, but with a much larger jump um, as you get into higher um, component percentages, like 21%. Again, the restrained expansion was repeated uh, with a reinforcement ratio for the restraint uh, matching the C-878 test. And again, uh, got smooth uh, data with a high degree of fidelity and granularity from the VWSG uh, with increasing uh, peak expansions correlating to the component percentage. And again, looking at the unrestrained compared to restrained expansion, the unrestrained specimens uh, for a given component percentage uh, display a higher peak expansion. With the exception of at lower component percentages, the difference between the restrained and unrestrained expansion diminishes somewhat. For the restrained columns, we cast uh, the specimens into removable PVC forms so that there wouldn't be the same trauma to the specimens. Uh, the specimens were stripped at six to seven hours, which was after final around the time of final set for the concrete and water cure was initiated using micromisters immediately thereafter since there is no reservoir to hold water against the uh, specimens were cured by spraying and with careful load cell installation we kept the pre-compression loads um, as a non-factor and again uh, we had three separate restraint levels the middle restraint 5 8 inch diameter steel rods match the stiffness of the mature concrete, while the half inch and three quarter inch rods bracketed the problem with higher and lower restraint stiffness. And then we used a load cell with restraint and bearing plates uh, to measure the uh, load development at the reaction point of the frame on the column and used a hydrostone leveling compound uh, to give us a uniform bearing surface. 
So here's the expansion data for the 15% component restrained columns and the same for the 17% component restrained columns. What we saw is that the expected ordering of the trends, which would be the lighter restraint resulting in higher peak expansions was not noticed. And we, we uh, presumed that there's an issue and discovered that there was indeed a problem. As soon as the concrete reached final set and the forms were stripped, hydrostone was added and the load cell was installed and micromisting began to cure the column. If the hydrostone was not set when the water was turned on, however, the hydrostone stayed soft as the column expanded and not all of that expansion was registered uh, because the column was not truly being restrained. So this problem was addressed by making sure that the hydrostone had some extra time uh, after installation of the load cell to harden before the curing began. And that fixed this problem. And now you see that for the 19% component restrained columns, the half inch or the lightest level of restraint uh, resulted in the highest peak expansion. And the same for the 21% columns, uh, the three quarters inch and the five eighths inch uh, restraint resulted in a lower peak expansion than the one half inch restraint. Here's the same data sorted by component percentage and at a half inch restraint, you see this uh, layering again, similar to the uh, small scale specimens of the component percentage gradually increasing the peak expansion at seven days. However, at a five eighths inch restraint and a three quarters inch restraint, that trend gradually begins, begins to tighten up as the restraint level increases, the difference in peak expansion uh, was diminished. Also using the load cells, we measured the reaction and as would be expected for both 19 and 21% component, the stiffer restraint system, the five eighths inch and three quarter inch rods resulted in a higher uh, force acting on the uh, columns. And you can also see here that they stayed in compression for approximately uh, three weeks before moving uh, into uh, tension range. So in conclusion, the concrete expands during wet cure reaching its highest level of expansion when wet cure is terminated. In this case, that was set at seven days according to standard practice. Uh, for a similar specimen, a mix design with a higher uh, percentage of mineral uh, expansive admixture, uh, results in a higher degree of peak expansion and less shrinkage, therefore, at a given future time period. The unrestrained uh, specimens for a given component percentage resulted in higher peak expansions than their restrained counterparts. And for the restrained columns, the half inch rods or the lowest degree of restraint allowed the highest level of chemical expansion and the lowest amount of load development compared to other, uh, the same ones, the other ones in the same mix design with a stiffer restraint system. Uh, we've established a protocol that's a realistic passive restraint system for testing shrinkage comp. The removable forms reduce the physical trauma to the specimens. The micromisters kept the columns saturated to allow them to wet cure. Uh, carefully installing the load cells uh, eliminates the pre-compression loads and providing some time for the capping compound to harden uh, prevents uh, deleterious impacts to the strain measurement and other leveling uh, methods uh, such as sand or end grinding could be used if someone is so desired. So looking at the boundary stiffness problem, we the median, uh, the middle uh, frame restraint was 5 eighths of an inch because that rod area corresponded to matching the axial stiffness of the mature concrete where the three quarters inch and the one half inch restraint rods bracketed that problem with the half inch being about 36% less stiff and the three quarters inch rods being about 44% more stiff than the uh, mature concrete. For example, on the 21% component mix design, we saw 276 micro strain uh, expansion on the five eighths inch about 269 on the three quarters and 409 on the one half, corresponding to about a 33% increase in max expansion for the lowest stiffness, but only a 2.5% uh, decrease in expansion for the highest stiffness. So what this goes to show us is 
although it, the expansion increased in proportion with a decreasing restraint stiffness, a significant increase in restraint stiffness did not harm our ability to shrinkage compensate. So the vibrating wire strain gauge is performed well and using them in the future is recommended. And with a properly proportioned mixed design using the right amount of uh, shrinkage compensating cement in the proper proportion, restraint stiffer than a mature concrete slab will, should not uh, hamper shrinkage compensation and should allow uh, attaining the goals that are desired. So thank you to all the sponsors and thank you to all of you for the uh, ability to present today. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Steve.